Hello, and welcome to another general vlog video. Today I'm going to be showing you the way that I texture walls. Uh, it's, this is not necessarily a lesson because I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm just trying to show you the way that I do it. Um, you start out with spackling, drywall mud, whatever you want to call it. I use, at Lowe's, it's called the Ultra Lightweight. And the reason that I'm doing that is because this is a trailer with inch and a half thick walls. Yeah, inch and a half is all that we have. And if you can see, when I push it, there's deflection. And that's another reason why we're going to go over why I'm going to put it on thin. The thinner it is, the more flexible it is. I'm going to have people out there that's going to say, you can't do this, you can't do that. I've been doing this for 30 years. Uh, and I've had some minor problems. Uh, people actually getting thrown into the wall and stuff and it causing cracks. But as far as a general everyday living, there's not going to be any problems. So what I do is I take the mud and I get it on my hand just like this and I put it onto the wall. Now to prep my wall, there was a seam here because this is paneling. I just run just like real quick, run like that and then took my plastic putty knife and went down it. I can grab it if I can find it. It's actually in the sink. You guys are sitting in the sink. That's how small this kitchen is. And then you just grab your cutting knife and you go like that. And that is all the prep that you need. If there's any large holes the size of a pencil eraser or bigger, you can put drywall mud over top of them. Anything like nail holes for pictures or anything of that nature, don't worry about it. Just do this. This is all just one step. This whole wall to do both seams, and this seam down here continues at the bottom, was a five minute prep job. So once you've got your drywall mud in your hand, I take it and I just start smearing it. And yes, I do drop some. I just start smearing it like this, about four passes. Then I take the blade of my hand right here, and I bring most of it back off. I would say, probably 60% of it comes back off. Now once I've done this, then I'll take and go up to the top, get it, you know, all the way up to the ceiling. Same thing, once you put it on, then take the blade of your hand and take most of it back off. Not all of it, just most of it. You want it as thin as possible on walls that can, can move. You know, if you can see deflection in your wall, then you probably want it thin because the thinner it is, the more movement that, that it'll actually have. And I'm going to go ahead and do about down to here real quick. So I'm going to grab another handful. Same thing, just in my hands. And I'm going to come side to side with it. However it goes on, I let it go on. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go down to the bottom of this window. Of course, you know, I'll be doing the whole wall. But, you know, just, you don't have to be neat with it. You do, I try to keep it off the floor as much. But I did hit a big glob on the floor. Okay, once you got it on there, once again, it doesn't matter which direction you go. Just get the majority of it off of there. You can see it building back up on my hand. I started with a big handful. And I'm going to end up with a handful also. Now I'll clean my hands off in the bucket a little bit. And I'll make sure that I got it all. I'm probably right in your guys' way. I have a very small kitchen, 10 by 10 kitchen with the countertops. It comes out to be about an 8 by 10. And you guys are actually setting in the sink. So, anyways, once you get that done, Take and get the majority of it off your hands. I mean, I still have that on my hands. And then you take your hands. This is my pattern. You know, you can do it. I mean, you could go like this. And that's kind of like a stipple effect. You could take a brush. You could take a sponge. You could take a rag. I just use my hands. And then once I've done that, then I take my hands. And I just start swirling it. Just like this. I don't want consistency. 
I don't want all my swirls to be in a row like this, like it is now. I want, you know, some up here, some here, some down here. You know, use both hands. I'm trying not to use both hands because I don't want to get in a view of the camera. You do this, and where I've already textured this corner and a little bit of that wall, that, you know, you can go right back over top of that. And I try to get a little bit of it off my hands to fill in little voids and gaps and stuff of that nature. And you will come on down. Now, I did my seams and everything earlier, about 30 minutes ago. I like to do my seams because they're a real thin seam. They're not thick. I just skimmed over top of them. And when you're doing that, you can do about 30 minutes. You know, 15, 30 minutes, somewhere thereabouts. If it's thicker, of course, you know, you can tell when it's dry because it changes colors. I don't know if you can see that now through around this corner or not, but this is white, and the stuff that I'm putting on is kind of a grayish color. Once it turns white, it's dry. So I'm just going to continue doing this. I'm doing this way more than I normally would. And that, to me, is textured. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm done with that part of the wall. So now, just real quick, I'm going to grab another handful, and I'm going to come over here. And you can overlap this, you know, that the texture is going to be there for about 20 or 30 minutes. You can go back over top of it. You can retexture it a different style if you want. Get it up toward the ceiling. Sometimes a little harder, especially considering I am texturing this ceiling which normally I texture my ceiling first, but I didn't this time because of video. But if I texture my walls first and then I want to jump right to my ceiling, a lot of times, like I'm over here, I'm touching the wall and stuff. So I normally do my ceilings first, but you can do it however you want to. And it doesn't really matter. You'll figure out the best strategy for you and the best working conditions for you to do it in. You know, if it's raining outside or a lot of moisture in the air, it's going to take a little longer to dry. But being this thin, it does really dry fast. I mean really, really, really fast. And by really, really, really fast, I mean to go back over top of it, these seams have been done about 30 minutes ago. But let it dry overnight before you try to paint it. At least, at the least, texture in the morning and then paint at night or in the, late in the evening. But I always wait until the next day. This is a day old and it's plenty ready. And I'll show you a few more little tricks. Okay, once you've done this, you know, I've got the most of it, majority back off. And yes, I am going kind of in a pattern right this second. I'm just going back and forth. And I got a little too thick down here, so I'll pull all of it back off. And if you don't like what you just did, just go back over it. Don't leave it where you're unhappy because you think, oh, well, I already, already did that. Because you can do this a hundred times if you wanted to, you know, to get different effects, different patterns. Um, I've seen people take sponges wet. I've seen people take sponges dry. I've seen people use paint brushes, big, large paint brushes about that wide, wet it a little bit, and just kind of do like a crazy eight figure. And you can do that. You can do, instead of circles like I did, you can do like a crazy eight figure. My other house that I did, I did that, but it also was 716 OSB walls, and I could put it on a little bit thicker. And it, I mean, you can, you can come in here and write your name. There, write your name. Now that looks kind of weird right now, but once you paint over it, that'll kind of blend in, and you really have to be looking to notice it. Of course, I don't want my name on the wall. So now I'm going to go in here with both hands, and I'm just going to try not to texture in a pattern. Now you can texture in a pattern. If that's what you like, do it. I don't much care for a pattern. I like it to be random. And you also got to kind of watch out, or things that I don't like, it may not bother you, 
But things that I don't like is like if I'm right here where I lift my hand like that. I don't know if you can see that, but that looks, to me looks really bad. So just kind of slide your hand off as you're doing it. Go back over it. You know, I don't like that. And I don't like that. You know, and just kind of. Now I'm happy. Other than I, I see a little too much pattern right up in here. So I'm going to. There we go. I don't like that. But now that part's done. See how quick that was? Just a very few minutes. I'm going to finish this little corner up here. And I'm not going to let, let you sit here and watch me do the whole wall. That would be kind of boring for you guys. You get the gist of it. You take it out. You put it in your hand. You smear it on. You take the blade of your hand right here. You bring it back off. Not all of it, but a lot. 60 to 75% of it back off. And that's what you've got. It's lightweight. It's flexible to some extent. And now you have a textured wall. Why did I do a textured wall? Why do I do any textured walls? This is a 1963 mobile home. It has a lot of nail holes. It has a lot of damage. Behind you, I just filled in a window because I'm going to put backsplash all back in there. You know, you can never make that stuff look right. You know, now, yeah, you can go back over it with this stuff, you know, the, the drywall mud, and take a flat putty knife and go back over it, sand it down, and make it look decent as a flat wall. But there's so many places in here, it would literally take me weeks, maybe even months, to get this, not just this room, but the whole place, to get it prepped to paint and make it look right on a flat wall. Paint, generally... Let's go with, uh, I'm on a budget, so let's go with Walmart paint. Good choice, color choice, whatever it's called. It's about $15 a gallon. You can get any color you want mixed up. It's a paint and primer in one. Drywall mud, the ultra lightweight, and I'll try to flip this around. My bucket is really dirty. You're not going to be able to see it. It is USG sheetrock brand, ultra lightweight. I like it because it does not hardly weigh anything. It's less weight on my walls and more flexibility. That is $15, a five gallon bucket. A five gallon bucket is going to do these two walls and this two sheets of ceiling that I've got in here. Plus I've got about $15 in paint plus $15 in ceiling paint. So $45, $50, I textured my walls and I painted. Yours may be a little bit more if your place is a lot larger than this. But you figure for every gallon of paint you buy, buy a five-gallon bucket of drywall mud. That's a basically kind of a rough idea. It's going to take more. If you put it on thicker, it's going to take more. If you put it on thinner, it's going to take less. And I'm probably way too up on the camera. I don't have really a good zoom mode on this, and the room's so small, and I apologize for that. Anyways, this is not a lesson. It's just, I'm just showing you how I do this, so in case you want to do it, give it a try. Get your hands muddy. And that's basically, it's a consistency of clean mud. You don't want to put it in your mouth, but it's, it's clean. It's nice white mud. Have a little bit of fun with it. Put it on your walls, texture your walls. Of course, I'll show you this after. I got a little bit on the ceiling, and I'll just kind of wipe it off. And I've got an hour to do that. Um, have a little bit of fun with it. I will show you what it looks like after it's been painted. It won't look near like this. But when you can see in my, the way that I need to put it on, I like that I can still see wall color through it. Because that lets me know I'm putting it on thin. I have put it on thick before in regular stick build houses. But once again, I'm working with flexibility. The prep time. Do your seams if you've got seams. Real roughly. I didn't even put tape over this seam. Because the butt joint of it was so close together. Now over here I had about a quarter of an inch. Between the seams. Up here and down here. 
And I did put mesh tape on there. And I'll show you the mesh tape. It's self-sticky. I can't pull any of it off because my hands look like this. But it's just tape. It, it kind of reminds you of any type of tape you've ever used. It's sticky. It's mesh. It looks like the string that goes through the windows. Wipe your walls down real quick. And don't spend any time on it. Just barely wipe them down. Keep all the dust and stuff off of it. Then put all this on it if you have to. Take a, a putty knife, run a thin coat over it, let it set for an hour, then start texturing your wall. It's quick, it's easy, it doesn't take, this really is not going to take me much more time to do this than it is to paint. So I'm going to close this out, I'm going to do this little bit of an edge over here, up on that corner, and I don't know if you guys can even see that through the camera, but... I'll do that real quick and then we'll end this video and I wish I could give you some more advice or just mess around with it. See what you like your texture to look like. See what you can live with. Once again, I'm just wiping it on and you'll learn when you do this a lot and by a lot I've already done a room and a hallway with it in this place. I've done other houses in it. You'll learn kind of how to wipe and blade kind of both at the same time so you don't have to keep refilling your hand. And I'm going to go down to that bottom of that window and then I'm going to take the excess off my hand just by scraping it on the bucket. And then I'm going to try to take a little bit of it back off, getting as close as I can to the window frame, as close as I can to the wall. So, you know, you don't want your texture to be an inch away from everything. You want it to be right up to it. But yet, on some, some instances, like say you weren't going to do your ceiling. You know, you, don't, you want to be a little careful not to get this on your ceiling if you're not going to redo your ceiling. But if you do, just take a wet rag and wipe it back off. Okay, now that I've got this, my hands are dirty. They, I call that clean. It's just there's they're not a bunch on it. And then I will take and start... Texturing like this. I hope you guys can see this. I'm getting right up to that window ledge, that window frame. I'm um, going to run down in my corners. I'm going to take a little bit and just put it right in this corner and kind of fill that little corner gap up. Just like that. Take and wipe it off this wall because I'm not ready to do this wall yet. And as you can see, you don't have to be neat. You don't have to be... All this stuff wipes off. Even when it dries, you can get it wet and still wipe it off. I'm sure you guys don't like seeing my backside while I'm doing this. I'm not used to filming. I don't edit. So... You, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And there we go. And I'm happy with that. I'm just doing that upper edge right there real quick. And I caused a little bit of a ridge. So now I got rid of that ridge and I just re-round texture it. This is where my spices are going to go. Up on top of this little ledge. You can't really see it probably. But... Like I said, you can go back and massage it and get it just the way that you want it. And it's not really experience that makes this any better. It's experiment, not experience. Just experiment with it. Figure it out. As long as it's not real thick, you're never really going to be looking at it and saying, Oh, I don't like that. When it's thin... It just kind of blends everything in. I showed you in previous videos what my living room and everything looks like. Now, the weird thing that's going to be on this, and I did get some on my window ledge. Once I wipe my hands down, I keep calling that a ledge. The ledge is down here, the window frame. Once I uh, wash my hands off, I'll grab a rag and come back and just wipe that up. Three-second job. But there we've already textured half that wall. 
and I can still go back and, oh, I don't like that, or I don't like this, and, you know, fine-tune it. And I can do that for the next 30 minutes. Do it, have fun with it. But now the funny thing is, I have to go over here and wash my hands off so I can turn the camera off. So you guys are going to kind of be staring at the wall for a second while I wash my hands off. So I come over here, just regular water. I like to take a rag because a rag kind of helps get it off quicker. And it all washes right out of your rags. I use a, a washcloth, well, a dish towel. And it all washes right out. You know, you just kind of rinse it and then throw it in the washer. You'll be fine. Like I said, it's, it feels like mud and it kind of looks like mud and they even call it drywall mud but it's clean it's not a nasty dirty mud from outside okay so now i'm going to take you off the tripod real quick which is going to be i'm going to make you guys dizzy so hold on i'm going to get in the way of the camera for a second then i'm going to take you off the tripod so just hold on because you're going to bounce a lot. Oh, did I make you guys bouncy? Okay, so you come over here. This is a 21-minute video so far. So, and I talked a lot. That's a 10-minute job at the most. You really can't tell how good it's going to look when you see other colors and stuff shining through. But you will see here shortly how much this will change this. This is what I did yesterday. And I would say by the light in here that you're not going to be able to see that. So let's go over here where it's colored, where I've already painted. This is what it's going to look like. Barely even see that. When you stand away from it, now I'm right up on it and I'm zoomed in. When you stand away from it, you really don't see it. You kind of do, but you kind of don't. And it's a really nice look. Oh, and by the way, while I'm here... I did get my closet done. Let me actually shut the door so my first initial look at it don't look really bad. I got my closet done. Closet slash pantry. This is going to house my trash can, my vacuum cleaner, my broom, my mop, my Swiffer. It's going to house all of that good stuff. And I'll have a ledge at the top to keep trash bags uh, and on the back side of it, even though it doesn't look very thick, the back six inches of it, maybe only four inches, is going to be shelves. I'm going to have a large shelf. Let's try to get back where you can actually see. I'm going to have a large shelf up here that's going to come all the way to the front. And then in the front will be trash bags, cleaning supplies, the stuff that I normally kept underneath my sink. I'm trying not to do that anymore. And you're seeing my mess through there in my living room. It's late at night, uh, it's 11.30, and I've been sitting there munching on popcorn, and you can see my towel laying there to clean my hands with, and my popcorn bowl. Anyways, then, back here, I'm going to have probably every 8 inches and 6 inches out, I'm going to have a row of shelves all the way down to the floor. That way I can keep extra canned goods. Maybe the top shelf of it might be like my cans of Pledge that I can't fit up here or I bought too many or what. I don't really buy too many cans of Pledge, but, you know, just overflow. Now, I see one thing over here I don't like. It really looks clustered right here. See all that? I don't like that. But look at this. Just like that, boom, it's gone. If you get a little too dry... Let me show you what you can do. Now see, a lot of that come off my hand. Now I'm going to come over here, turn the sink on, rinse my hand off, but leave my hand wet. If it starts to get a little too dry, then, and it wasn't a little too dry, I'm just showing you what you could have done. There. Uh, I don't like this. I try to keep all patterns out. Now I'm okay with that. It looks a lot better to me. I have actually seen people sculpt things on their walls. You can actually do fire flames on your walls. I'm not going to mess mine up and show you that real quick. But, you know, you, 
You use your imagination. We've all got imaginations, whether we choose to use them or not. And if you live in a house like I do, well, I live in a trailer, but if you live in a house, a trailer, a barn, a garage, wherever you want to do this at, experiment. You're not going to hurt anything. It's going to look better than a wall that's 50, 60 years old, that's had a thousand nail holes in it, and just experiment with it and see what you can come up with. And if you do really good and you're really proud of it, drop it down in the comments below. Take a picture, take a video or whatever, drop it in the comments below so we can all see it. Anyways, that is it. This is General Vlog Videos. If you like this video, like I said, this is not a lesson. I'm just showing you what I do. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, a like, hit the subscribe button, and let me know that you guys want to see more videos, and we'll just continue going on from here. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye.